Do you find yourself stressing over what colors you should use for a painting and then spending way too much time thinking about it? Well, I got a couple of messages and comments recently that say, I finished the drawing and then I spent days and weeks just trying to figure out what colors I should be using. Now, I'm gonna cure this for you hopefully in this video. You're gonna learn how to not stress over it, how to let go and just enjoy the process with whatever colors you choose, okay? so. You know my overarching philosophy that values are much more important than colors, that accurate drawing and values will lead to a realistic result if that's what you're after. But some people like to use the colors they like and that's perfectly fine, that's acceptable. Color does have some significance, okay? So for you, I wanna show you how it doesn't matter what color you use, just choose the colors that you like using, enjoy using in general, test it out, do some swatches, figure it out, take a week, uh, a month to figure these out and then you can use them for any painting you do and it will work. Why? Because you chose a color scheme and in the context of the painting and it's all very contextual, they will work. Your yellow will work with your red, will work with your blue. You don't have to look at a, a part of the of the photo and, or scene and think to yourself, what color is that? What color? It doesn't matter. Use whatever color you like and you enjoy. I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's get started. So we'll get started with the drawing. Now I actually considered skipping this step uh, and just going straight to the painting because that's the most important part here. But I do want to show you that I know a lot of people find it uh, useful. So let me show you. I'm just starting with where the car is going to be. So kind of in the middle, a little upper middle section. Now it's going to end around here. Okay. Now there is a very strong line here defining it to the right, so I want to preserve that. I'm basically building the shape of the car very loosely just to create a framework. This does require a lot of experience, so take your time, measure. That's what I always tell uh, my students and in the courses. Take your time. If you're uncertain of how to draw something, you take your time, you measure properly, you get the proportions right. I am confident enough to eyeball them but that may not always be the right decision even. Okay, so, but in this case I will. It will go ahead and just eyeball the whole thing uh, and hopefully that'll be accurate enough. So here is the window and here is the roof of the car. It's gonna be strong orange. Here is the side of the car. Here is that section under the window that you can hopefully see here. Um, here we have this kind of grills at the front, very old and beautiful car. I love cars, you know, sorry if you don't like them, uh, that's just how I roll, <laughs> pun intended. Um, I just love cars, you know. Um, and it's a subject that always interests me because it allows you to showcase light, I think, in a really good way. So that's the, the, the beauty of cars for me, uh, with all the sharp angles and the, the changes of direction. Uh, that's what I find most intriguing about them. If you're not a, necessarily the biggest fan of just light and shadow like I am, I'm pretty simple that way, you may not like them as much, but for me it's like the best. And then we have this uh, bumper. There's a shadow underneath that I want to get, so that's one, two, three, shadow. And it ends somewhere around here, goes back, goes back, and to the right. Okay, the shadow is cast somewhere around here. There is a gap here that I will put in. Maybe I won't actually show it in the painting process. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Not fully accurate, but pretty much close, close enough, good enough. Um, the light's moving a bit, so sorry about that, the natural light from the window, so maybe there's a bit of... Uh, change of warmth. Maybe it was a cool video, now it's a warm video, sorry about that. But don't worry, it's not gonna affect the painting stage at all, okay? So now we have a couple of buildings in the background, we have this kind of shadow creeping in through here. These are the actual buildings, but they're gonna play a really secondary supporting role here. I may just darken the whole thing up uh, and disregard it completely. Okay, so just letting you know, and with that being said, let's get to painting. So the colors don't really matter, but what matters is committing. So these are the colors I'm gonna use, and I'm gonna commit to them. Nicolazzo yellow, 
bright blue, which is basically a phthalo blue, uh, and a kind of, what was that, Cranacridone red. Uh, these two are White Knights, St. Petersburg, this one's Daniel Smith. I considered using uh, my, I think that's an Indian Indian Yellow by White Knights, but I'm going to save that for later, maybe for a later even paint show episode. Uh, for now I'm going to be using these three. I may use just a little bit of Perlin Red as a supportive role, but I probably won't. The whole idea is committing. Commit yourself to just using these. You don't need anything else, okay? I'm gonna prove it to you. You don't have to think about what colors should I use, what should I do. You don't have to worry about any of that. So I'm gonna start with the background and as it's a pretty dark and cool color, I'm gonna use this uh, blue here. My bright blue by White Knight St. Petersburg and I'm just using the colors at their purest state, that's how I do it. So a bit of blue. And again, as soon as you decide on the colors, you don't have to, you just choose, you can even choose at random. You choose three primary colors, and that's it. You stick to them, you don't need to overthink this step. Okay, I would even go with the same three primary colors for everything, because that way you'll build experience using them. Okay, now as I get closer to the car, I want to be a little careful uh, and ensure I don't miss uh, those oranges and, and bright yellow. So I'm going to start mixing an orange here with a bit of yellow and red. Um, and it's not going to be like a bright fiery orange because again I committed to these primaries and they just don't have that in them. It's going to be a more muted one but I'm fine with that. Uh, so adding a bit of yellow here. This is going to be quite uh, light here down the middle. I'm, I'm, I may use, let's use a bit of a pure yellow just for fun, see what happens. A lot of water, because I'm gonna need it to be quite um, quite light. And then let's just put straight in here the red. Let's just go crazy. I'm gonna show you it doesn't matter. That's the beauty of it. It does not matter, okay? Finish up this section. Just go ahead like this here, because to all of you who are wondering, I don't know what colors to use. I spent hours thinking about colors. A lot of people have said to me they they finished the drawing and then they spend like days thinking about the colors. That's a waste of time. Don't do that. Just paint. <laughs> and I'm gonna show you how little of a significance it actually has. Now let's just go with a bit of cool here in the shadow. That's kind of an improvisation. Now there is this very gentle highlight I want to lift from here and I'm just using a paper towel to do that. So here we go. Just lift like that. That's it, that's all we need. I'm gonna allow this some uh, time to dry and then we'll continue. So congratulations, now we've come to the hardest wash uh, there is, but this one's also when we'll pretty much wrap this painting up uh, and we'll just need to add some details. But notice, again, colors, same ones, exact same ones. Now in the original photo, there's a bit of a sky here. I'm gonna drop that completely. You just feel like it's unnecessary. Uh, so notice a lot of blue, a lot of the quinacridone red or the, you know, the type of <laughs> very uh, cool red. And I get this kind of a black color, okay, or gray black color. I'm just adding a bit more water. It's the same colors. Notice how I have, didn't need to think about anything when it comes to colors. I already knew what I'm going to use exactly. Uh, and where, where, because I'm just using three primary colors. Now what I can do is push a bit towards every primary in the places I want to. So if I want a bit more red here, I can do that. If I want a bit more blue in the background, I can do that as well. But I'm gonna leave the background very clean, very dark, very backgroundy if that makes sense. So now we have to be a little careful, we're getting towards the car itself, negative painting around the rooftop, like so, around the body of the car as well, and here is where I will warm it up, just because it's the ground, it's where there is a bit more light casting, so here we go. Notice how I'm holding my brush at the very tip, this actually helps me with control. Um, takes a while to get used to this kind of grip, but it does work, okay? Cutting around the vehicle, a bit more yellow, like so, because it's, again, around the ground where the light kind of 
bounces off a little better. A bit more red onto that. Notice I, I don't care. I don't, it doesn't matter. Using a bit of red here, a bit of yellow there, the result is still going to be beautiful. And that's only because the values matter and because I'm going for a color scheme that works together. Why does it work together? Because it's simply three primary colors. Simply a cool blue, a uh, cool red, and a kind of middle of the road yellow, I would say. Uh, maybe more towards the warm yellow, but that it doesn't really matter. So here we go, the shape of the car is done. I'm just being more careful where it matters. Nothing more. Um, now, we'll get started working on the body of the car and by the time we get to it, this part's almost dry. So all I really have to do is kind of um, work on top of what I already have. So a bit, and I said I may use a bit of the Perlin Red for support because I need that uh, uh, warmer fiery red, okay? So I'm gonna just get a bit of that. I also have a bit of cadmium here, so, you know, I could use that as well. But that's pretty much it. And now I get a, a bit more of a fiery red. Now the problem is, uh, and I'm actually reconsidering this move. You know what? I may just leave this area untouched because it has to be so light. Let's do that, you know what? Change of plan, folks. Let's leave it as is, okay? We're gonna trust that the current red is gonna hold up and keep it interesting and we'll move straight into the window and the, the details. Later on we can come back and revisit this area. Now to really bring out the red, what I want to do is keep everything else very muted. So this um, window glass, it's all going to be pretty gray and even could be with a bit of a, a blue bias so that it contrasts better with the warmer values, okay? But I still want it to be perhaps a little lighter than the background, okay? So here we go, like that. I'm gonna inject some water into the corner, which will keep it light and move the paint a bit. So like this, here we go. And that's it, try not to overwork it. That's never a good idea. I do wanna add a bit of blue to that. I feel like I want it to be a little bluer, a little cooler, so here we go, and that's all I'm gonna do finish up this side. Now let's move on to this shadowy area. So a bit of pure blue because I feel like I didn't get enough of it here. Straighten out the shape of the window a bit. Connect this blue here. Now here we have a... this should be very dark here. But under it, it should go back to being a little lighter. I'm gonna mix a lighter gray that's also a little warmer. And I'm using the same colors. I don't care. All I care about really is kind of temperature, but that's also pretty loose in my approach. So that doesn't really matter to me that much as well. So here we go. All of the right side of the car. And we'll see if this is enough to make this orange, the orange parts pop, okay? I think they're just much uh, lighter than, than they appear to be. I think there's a bit of an illusion going on. I'm gonna actually test this. I'm gonna cheat, quote unquote, a bit, and actually test this uh, with Photoshop. I'm gonna open it up and see how dark it really is so that I can tell if I'm being under the illusion. That happens a lot, and then you have to just deal with it, you know? Sometimes you fall for the illusion. So now I'm gonna connect this to the shadow on the ground, a little blue to get it cooler. And do I need to think about what blue I'm using? What blue am I, you know? Switching to, no, because I'm just using one blue and a bit of red. So that's the same red I've been using so far. I'm gonna pick up a bit of both reds and I'm just gonna darken this back section with them. Just a bit, like so. Because it is darker, there's this thing going on like that. And back to the blue and the cooler shadow on the ground. And I don't need to think about anything, really. I have everything I need. I have all the colors I need, I have everything. Now the tire here is a little lighter, so what I want to do is just inject a bit of water in there. Oh, and one thing I also forgot doing is I want to blend this edge and hopefully it's not too late, at least for the lower section. Here we go. So notice how you blend one edge and the rest kind of falls into place. You don't have to now blend the entire thing. You can kind of get what you're looking at. Uh, let's continue with this brush, a bit of a smaller one will give me more accuracy. Continue here. Close off this gap, 
a bit of water to again bring out the tire so just water and then pull it downwards like so and we've got a lighter section for the tire and this is where it gets a little confusing so I'm gonna have to focus really hard we have this shape here then we have this uh, bumper at the front and then another kind of highlight but not too light then into the shadow here and the most important part is to preserve the lower highlight here if I lose it it will hurt the one of the more interesting I think parts of the painting it's not a, a disaster really but yeah, you just want to make sure and, and this part should be darker let's introduce some blue because that's my darkening basically paint so you see I don't have to think about anything really because I already chose my colors in advance I already know exactly what I'm gonna be using and all I care about now is temperature and I'm completely free mentally to deal with temperature because I left out all other variables uh, so that's again the benefit of it now I'm gonna put in a bit of a shadow here and this is pretty much all prima I don't do a lot of glazes or anything like that everything gets in in one go let's get this some details of the headlight bit of a shadow here bit of shadow just under this part, a bit of it here, just kind of making it up and I think this will work, you know, this is a bit enough of a bright color to hold up the painting, uh, I may add on top of it just a thin glaze, we'll see about that again, I'm gonna check that out in Photoshop soon. So here are the grills, uh, I want these to be a little more uh, neutral, so I'm adding red because the mixture is right now a bit of too much towards the green side. And this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, and this is probably as much as I need. There's a cast shadow to the right. Notice how careless, quote unquote, I am with these details because they don't really matter. License plate with a bit of blue. Let's do a touch of blue on the license plate right around here. Then some dry paint to just put in some lettering and again this is a smaller painting relatively so I don't need too much details and now let's work on the left uh, uh, headlight get that shadow underneath like so all of my colors again I'm gonna remind you again and again are the exact same same blue same red same yellow these are the colors that were responsible for this entire painting no tricks, nothing, I'm not doing anything weird. That's the only thing I need. And you see it works. Hopefully it works out nicely to your taste, to your liking as well. I'm gonna add just a bit of this kind of curvy line that I can see here, just to better indicate the shape of the car, a bit of that here. I'm gonna go back with some darker uh, paint in just a moment and a thinner brush, but for now, red, yellow, for this section here, there's the tire here underneath that. That'll help us bring out this shape as well. This there is, there are these um, kind of darker, I'm gonna show you, um, vertical lines that go kind of like that. Here one and here is two. So I wanted to get that in and they cast a shadow to the right like so, a bit of a lighter shadow I will say, like this to the right. And now here is one thing that I knew that I'll have to fix soon. These grills are darker, they're inherently darker. There is a deeper shadow like I did, but they're darker. And there is this kind of small detail here, connecting this headlight. This should be a little darker. Towards the top, they go a little darker. So around here, just a bit of a darker shape. There are the wipers one two and there is this kind of shadow around here it goes like that and believe it or not that's the 80 percent of the painting that we're done with so now just a couple of details i think with a very dry gentle brush so a bit of red then we have this detail in the shadow we have this area here. I'm gonna do this kind of thing. 
Now, let me just check out the reference one more time and see if I can uh, improve any of the orange parts. Okay, so that was an easy test. They are indeed a little darker, but not too much darker. So I'm gonna use my perlin and my um, quinacridone, and I'm gonna mix something that's very light. It can be a bit misleading, because it seems to be so strong in the original photo, but it's actually just a tad bit darker than the rest. So here we go, a thin glaze going over it, like so. That's one. And this is a very bright, kind of red-orange. You'll actually have to work hard on mixing it. It's not a natural color. It's actually similar to my uh, palette knife. So. If you can, and if you want to, mix it. If not, just default into doing what I'm doing right now. You don't have to. Actually, I'll bring out a bit more of the red here. Let's see what we can do with it. But you can see it's, it's, it's a rather light color. I wouldn't get too caught up in trying to imitate it. I would focus on the value. And as it's a little darker than the rest of the car, I do want to show that. So I'm just doing another thin glaze on top here. And that's pretty much it. I don't get too caught up on colors. Again, personal choice, personal taste. If you wanna recreate that bright orange, you go for it. You do that and have fun um, and choose the primary colors that will create it. You know, some colors will create it. I don't think they'll be very good to mix together. I'm just lifting up a highlight here. I don't think they'll mix really well together, but it's, uh, but it's your um, experiment to do. Okay, so feel free to do that. For me, I'm very pleased with how this one uh, is turning out. I think it has everything that it needs. And you, the main point here is notice how much simpler it is, just thanks to simplifying the primary colors. Okay, and I made a decision to use th three, maybe four, and I stuck to it. So I'm gonna add just a couple of details here in the background. Maybe let's use this larger brush. It's not large, but it is larger. Grab a bunch of paint here and just start putting in some details like so to hint at something here, maybe windows for this half imaginary building. Let's darken up the entire rooftop like so. Here we have some other buildings. You don't need anything really. So here we go. And I hope that makes sense. There's a good sense of light and shadow. There's, a, I think, an interesting composition here. Uh, it all works well together. You could darken, you could continue doing things like uh, indefinitely. And I had this interesting discussion uh, with a student about knowing when to stop. And you can always add more. Uh, but I think at some point you, you just have to ask yourself, will the painting benefit from what I'm doing right now or not? Will, if it may benefit, you know, you just don't have to do it. You just don't have to add anything. If it will benefit clearly and know it will, then go for it. But if it won't, then just stop like I'm going to do now. Thank you so much for watching. Let's now wrap it up. So I hope that gives you at least the permission not to worry so much about what color you'll be using. I hope you'll just try and figure out what colors you like and then use them for whatever painting. I'm very consistent with my colors. I'm just using probably the same three colors over and over and over again. Same blues, same yellows, same reds. I don't even try to match the color. I just kind of use whatever I have uh, on, on hand and it works out. It works out because it's all contextual. It's all contained within the painting. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me know if you have any follow-up questions down below. I really hope you enjoyed this process. Don't forget to give this video a like and a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And also subscribe if you still haven't. I post tons of processes, reviews, uh, painting masters episode, a paint show episode, a lot of different things that I think you'll enjoy. And I will see you again in another vid real soon.